Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt Sorbo, covering the algebra lessons for Skew the Script. Today, we'll be talking about quadratic equations, specifically with a fun menu item that you may have ordered from McDonald's. Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome in to lesson 4.1 in our Skew the Script algebra series. Today, detailing quadratic equations. Something you might be a bit more familiar with, though, is the McRib, McDonald's classic pork sandwich. It has a long and storied history. Uh, it was first introduced in 1982. However, however, despite being a hit, after just two years and a stretch of bad sales, the McRib was discontinued. But then something interesting happened. Come and get it. The barbecue's on at McDonald's. It's McRib time. There's grilled pork swimming in that sassy sauce. A little pickle, a little onion. Lick your fingers, smack your lips. You're biting the grill. Chomp. Just five years later, in 1989, the McRib was back. In fact, this trend continued. McDonald's would bring the McRib in, get rid of it, bring it back in at seemingly random intervals, the most recent of which was 2020. As you can see, the legend returned. In fact, the McRib has had multiple farewell tours. In 2005, McDonald's said it would permanently remove it from the menu. But then in 2006, after a petition from the fake boneless pig farmers of America, McRib got a second farewell tour. And then in 2007, it got a third farewell tour and sold 30 million sandwiches. McRib has been so popular in pop culture, it's inspired many songs and headlines. People have even created online trackers to detect where in local McDonald's McRibs are being sold. So our question for today is if the McRib is so popular and such a cultural icon, why does McDonald's only offer it on a limited basis and not simply all the time? If you'd like to follow along with our lesson today, check out the link below, print or download the guided notes and work through it as we discuss the McRib and quadratic equations. Starting off with quadratic equations as our first topic, um, as you're familiar, likely familiar with, quadratic equations take parabola shapes. They're shown here. The key ingredient here that makes this a quadratic equation is the x squared term. Um, and the standard form for a quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You can see here that in the uh, function given for the quadratic formula in the chart, um, we have an a term, a b term, and a c term. Specifically, a equals negative 1, b equals negative 1, and c equals 2. Um, in general, A determines whether the parabola opens upwards or downwards. Uh, if we have a positive A value, the parabola opens up. Negative, it opens down. In this case, it's negative 1, so the parabola opens down, as you can see here. Uh, and C is the y-intercept, which is the y value when x equals 0. Um, here we've rewritten the y equals ax uh, squared plus bx plus c. If we insert 0 for x, then the a and b terms go away. We get y equals a bunch of zeros plus c. Therefore, when x equals zero, y equals c. You can see here c equals two. We've circled that spot on the chart. Um, uh, the function equals two when x equals zero. So let's turn it back to the McRib and think of uh, McRib math or the business, the business decisions that McDonald's makes when rolling out the sandwich. The key terms we'll talk about is revenue, which is the total amount of money taken in, the cost, which is the total money McDonald's pays to produce and sell the McRib, and then the profit, which is the revenue you make minus the cost. So what you bring in minus what you have to pay. Um, something important to note, even if you have very high revenues, McDonald's could still lose money and thus have negative profit, which is bad if the costs are even higher. Therefore, McDonald's must decide the number of days to produce the McRib, which we'll define as X, to maximize their profit. Um, let's create a simple model at first. Uh, let's say it costs $200,000 a day to produce the McRib for, for uh, all of McDonald's, and they, McDonald's makes $400,000 every day in combined McRib sales across all of their stores. In this case, revenue is simple. It's $400,000 400, times X because we make $400,000 per day for, uh, and X is the number of days. And then our cost is 200,000 X because again, cost $200,000 uh, per day and we're selling the McRib for X days. So put simply our profit revenue minus cost is just 400,000 X minus 200,000 X or just 200,000 X. So in our simple model, we have this uh, term for profit and we can create a simple table where we have the number of days on the menu uh, as X and the total profit Y. 
Uh, and a quick note, in this case, we're modeling total profit as the sum of all profit accumulated over time. So for the example here, um, uh, on day five, we our total profit is the uh, uh, profit made on days one, two, three, four, and five, uh, all uh, cumulative added up. Um, if we chart these values, we can see a line just increasing up um, for the number of days in the menu. However, if this was in reality the model of profit, the McDon McDonald's would be incentivized to keep the McRib on the menu forever because the longer they have it on the menu, the higher the line goes, and eventually it would go to infinity and beyond, as our friend Buzz Lightyear uh, would like to say. So in this simple uh, make revenue model, we're going to uh, adjust some things. Right now we have the profit is equaling 400,000 uh, X. However, a more realistic model, which again, we'll define as make revenue is 400,000 um, times in parentheses, negative 0.001 X squared plus one half X. Um, and this model looks something like this. Again, we have X squared, so we have a parabola and that negative uh, 0.001, recall uh, how important the A term is, uh, that makes profit a downward opening parabola. Does this trend make sense over time? So this is something that's important to think when modeling different uh, economic uh, trends. And uh, the answer is yes. So for example, in 1982, we can imagine the sandwich was released and grows increasing fanfare. People were very excited. It was a novelty, a boneless rib sandwich. However, in 1983, the no uh, novelty started to wear off, revenue declines, and profits started to slow as people got less excited. In, in late 1983, McDonald's only sold enough uh, McRibs to even out with the cost of production, so they're not actually adding to their profit total uh, with McRibs. And then in 1984, eventually, the costs begin to outgrow the sales. So uh, the law seeds into the profits and McDonald's decides to discontinue the McRib. Uh, so the central idea behind this uh, kind of revenue model is that few people are going to regularly, regularly get the McRib over time. You'll have it once or, tw once or twice because it's a novelty, but eventually the novelty wears off and the costs of producing the McRib will outpace the revenue that it brings in. So Ronald McDonald thinks to himself, how can I sell the McRib a lot and keep it profitable? Uh, the simple idea is that to release it rarely and randomly so that it stays a novelty when it's out. The whole idea is we want the customer to think they need to get their McRib while it lasts. So for several years, the McRib will come back, induce headlines and novelty buying. People are excited because it's new and exciting and they'll head to the McDonald's and they'll, they'll pick up uh, their sandwich. Let's turn to the next topic in our discussion of finding the vertex, um, specifically with our McRib math. When McDonald's brings back the McRib, how long should they do it for? So again, we have our realistic profit model. We wanna figure out when is profit maximized. Uh, we can put our equation into standard form. So distribute the 400,000. We're gonna get negative 400 X squared plus 200,000 X. Um, and again, we can think of our Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C um, in this case. We have A is negative 400, B is 200,000, and C is zero. <clears throat> so again, returning to our question, when they bring back McRib, how long should they do it for? We have our profit model. Um, we have C equals zero. That's where we intersect uh, the Y axis. Um, we have that A is negative, so the parabola opens downward. And we have the vertex, which is what we want to find, uh, the tip of the parabola. In this case, it's a maximum. So how can we find the number of days X that maximizes total profit? Um, one strategy here is to use the axis of symmetry, which divides the parabola into two reflected pieces. Um, it will always pass through the vertex. And the axis of symmetry formula is X equals negative B over 2A. Well, we have our A and B terms from our profit function. So it's a simple matter of plugging in 200,000 uh, for B and negative 400 for A and uh, simplifying the denominator, two times negative 400 yields 800. And then dividing gives X equal to, equals 250. So X equals 250 is our axis of symmetry point. Um, and that tells us that the maximum profit occurs at 250 days uh, on the menu, so a little bit under one year. Um, now we can actually solve for our maximum profit Y, so the profit that McDonald's can expect from keeping the McRib on for this amount of time. Visually, we can see that uh, the vertex is about is at about 25 uh, million for the Y value. Um, however, this is an algebra course or an algebra discussion, so we should solve this algebraically. 
Um, to do that, we can actually plug in X equals 250 days into our profit formula, um, yeah, expanding out, so squaring the first term and then multiplying both terms out, we get negative 25 million plus 50 million, we get Y equals 25 million, which uh, meshes with our visual interpretation. So uh, what we found is that McDonald's should release the McRib for 250 days to maximize profit, and they should expect $25 million in total profit. Not a bad chunk of change for a boneless rib sandwich. Finally, let's uh, turn to finding the roots in these sorts of equations. So again, returning to our McRib, how long will it take for McDonald's to lose all of the profits it made? Um, and it, again, uh, we can think of an extreme example at X equals 500 days, we get back to zero profit. So this is the X intercept or root uh, or the X value when Y equals zero dollars. Um, and we can actually check our work using algebra instead of just visually looking at the chart. So to solve for the root, we start with our um, profit equation. Uh, we set y equals zero since we wanted the x value when the profit of y equals zero. Um, and we have uh, our first option, which is the quadratic formula. However, this is maybe a, a difficult option uh, to use. Obviously, it looks like a pretty comp complicated formula. So instead, we can use option two, which is factoring out the x. Um, so there's no, since there's no C term, there's no constant, all the terms share an X term uh, or an X value. So we can factor it out. Um, as you can see, negative 400 X squared and 200,000 X both have an X term. Um, so we factor out X um, and we get X times negative 400 X plus 200,000. Um, so we factored out the X and now we just think about when we can make the right side equal the left side. Uh, AKA, when can we make the right side equal zero? Well, uh, one very simple case is when X equals zero, the right side is going to be zero times something, which is zero. Um, as you can see here, zero uh, times anything is going to be zero. So that works. When X equals zero, the, this equation will be equal. So zero is one of the roots, which we can see on our chart. And then uh, that definitely makes sense in terms of economic um, uh, sense. You'll make no profits if you ha haven't actually started selling something yet. So when X equals zero, uh, you definitely expect the profit to be zero. Um, but that's not really the root we're interested in. Let's turn to the other root. Um, we already made the X term zero. So in this case, we have to make this uh, term into zero. Um, so think about setting negative 400 X plus 200,000 equal to zero and solving for X, the X that will make this, this equation zero, add 400 X to both sides, get 200,000 equals 400 X. And uh, from here, we just have to divide by 400 to isolate X, we get 500 equals X. So in this case, we plug in 500 to our original equation. Um, we get negative 200,000 plus 200,000. That's just zero equals X times zero which comes out to zero equals zero, which is exactly what we were looking for. Um, and that confirms that 500 equals X is our second root. So specifically in economic sense, it will take uh, X equals 500 days for McDonald's to lose all of its profit if it continues producing the McRib. Let's turn to our discussion for the day for McRib math. We've already seen how the graph of total accumulated profits over time is a downward parabola. Your task is to uh, sketch a graph of the profit each day and what that would look like. So work on just drawing your rough sketch, days on the menu on the X axis, daily profit on the Y axis, and discuss that with your classmates. That's all for today with Skew the Script. We'll see you next time.